Welcome or welcome back to the third part of my little tutorial series about how to map a heritage trail in a relation type site, which we are doing in Greek Namana. In the first part, we had mapped most of the plaques that showed the trail and then had added more information to these plaques or information signs and added images from Wikimedia. And in the last part, we're going to add the objects that you're actually supposed to look at while you're on the heritage trail, because you're not just supposed to read the plaques, you're supposed to take it all in, the buildings and monuments and whatever is part of the heritage trail. And I think the best way to do that is just work off the list, the 27 points of interest on the heritage trail without using the map that is provided in the leaflet. But looking at the leaflet here, and just working off, as I said, 27, I think there are. I haven't, as I said before, because I didn't have time to survey, I didn't go across the bridge, so all the Tinner Hinge bits are missing of the heritage trail relation that I have mapped. But if there are people in Greek Namana, or if I go to Greek Namana again, I might do that at some point in the future. So we won't finish the work in this video either because it is quite a bit of work to do. But I think it is something you can do in a team as well. You don't have to take the pictures yourself. If you have someone else to do it, you know, someone can go around, take the pictures and someone can go around and add the plaques and then a third person can create the relation on OpenStreetMap and all that. It'd be a nice community project to do if you can find the people to do it. But you can also do it by yourself, of course. And there's no time pressure on it at all. So it might take me three years in the making. I don't know when I started mapping all these plaques, but at least it will get done at some point. The first thing on the list is the Convent of Mercy. Now, that is already a problem because I don't actually know if that building still exists. And where that convent was, I think it's on the plaque is here. So there's a footpath going leading up here, but there's a gate before the footpath and I've never walked up there. So I don't actually know where the convent is. I presume it's either this church building here, which I haven't even looked at, or it was on that side. What is a bit peculiar about the heritage trail in Greek Namana is that they have sites on the trail that are no longer there. There's nothing to see, but we will get to that when we get to that. And the convent might be one of those. So I have added the plaque to the trail, so we can't add the object as well. The next one are the widow's cottages, and I have talked about those before, and we can add those. It's these four buildings here. So we're going into the editing mode, and there's actually better imagery available. So we can just highlight these four and go down to relations and choose site Greek Namana Heritage Trail. They are not excessively mapped. There could be more information on them, but I won't go into that because then we'll never finish. So I could add the reference IE and IAH, the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage number to each one of these buildings. Because at some point in the future, we'll, we will have links to their database, the National Monument Service database, and that will get you more information about them. But at the moment, we don't. What I could do is, where is that plaque? Um, it says, that they were built circa 1860. I could add that information. I'd highlight all four and add the start date circa 1860. It's better than nothing. So that's number two on the heritage trail, number three. And now we have to start reading upside down the assembly rooms, which are here. It's on this building, so I presume this is the building that the assembly rooms were in. So we can add that to the relation. This one here is actually a ruin. 
that's number three. Number four, the Bianconi archway. It's gonna be a bit tricky. What does it say again? I can't remember. At this turning point. Hmm. Well, I don't know. There's no turning point there. I don't know what to add there, unfortunately. So we'll skip that as well. Next one, number five, is the fountain. We can add that. That's over here. I added that previously. It's actually disused. It's not connected to the water supply anymore. But we can add that to the heritage trail. And we can also add the start date, which was 1899, if you remember that from the last video. The fountain, the monastic mills. That's up on High Street. It's this building complex here. Maybe we'll just use these two buildings because these two buildings also have uh, reference numbers on the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage in IAH. The other ones aren't. They're just extensions. They're not as important, not as historic, I presume. And add those. Peg Washington's Lane. That has its own video, because I made a video about how I mapped that lane, which is this one. Add that. It has a lot of tabs, as you can see. Peg Washington's Lane number seven, Greek Namana's Bridge. I couldn't find a plaque on that. Rather than highlighting this bit here, which is only the road, I'll highlight the whole bridge area and add that. You see it also has a benchmark there in the middle. Sure, I have a video about those somewhere. Great name on the bridge. Eddie Powers Memorial. That's on the Tina Hinge side. It's somewhere there. Canal Hotel. I'm not sure if that still exists, but you can see Hotel Street here. So I think there was a hotel here at some point. I'm not sure if it's still there. As th this ice cream parlor is as far as I ever got in Tina Hinge. So I can't do anything about that. The starch factory is one of, I think it's this building here. But again, it's on the Tina Hinge side, so I can't do that. Boatman's Memorial, that's also Tina Hinge side. Tina Hinge Castle is number 13. That is mapped here. And I can add that. See, that has its own um, ref. So it's a monuments records number. I did that previously and it has its own Wikidata entry as well. I think I created Wikidata entries for most of the tower houses in County Kilkenny. This is Car Carlo, but I still added it. I have to zoom out a little bit to get the relation on the screen. 13, number 14, the market house. That is this one. Oh, it's actually no longer vacant. It's retail now. And add that to the relation. There's a shop that moved in recently. That's that page. And then they sent me another page. Don't look at the map. Don't look at the map. The fever hospital. No, I did look at the map for that one. It's at the corner of... I think it is described here. It's at the corner of Barrow Lane and the Oisery Key. I don't know what an Oisery is. But I wonder if they mean Oisery. Oisery is where you grow willows for basket making. That would make a lot of sense, but it's not spelled like that. Anyway, it's at the corner here and it's just a brown site. I've taken photographs and put them on Wikimedia, but there's no plaque saying this is the site of the fever hospital. There's nothing there on the ground to tell you this is the site of the fever hospital. So I'm not including it in the in the relation, in the heritage tree, because there's nothing to see there. It's just a brown site. Greg Wood, I never made it as far. 
uh, St. Peter's Church. I've also never seen, but it is mapped. It's at the end of Whitehall. It's this one here. It might not actually have that much left. I think there is only the tower left, but we'll add it to the relation anyway. I think there's a walking trail in Greg Wood. Is that Greg Wood? Possibly. But I've never walked that hiking trail because, again, you only get an hour in Greg Namana. General Clooney's house. That's here. It's this building here, which is also on the NIH. Dushk Abbey. It's a bit more complicated because I mapped it with a lot of building parts. So I have to find the outline first. Here. There are plaques on Dushk Abbey, I think two, but for some reason I've never mapped them so I couldn't add the plaques to the relation. That's for another visit. The Penal Day Mass House, that's another one of those that is not accessible and I'm not sure if it's still there. It's, I think it's maybe this ruin here, or it might be, there are walls here, it might be one of those. I have no idea because again there is no plaque there on site telling you which of the many ruins is the Penal Mass House. That's number 20, number 21 is Cheever's Memorial. I think I already added that to the relation earlier because the memorial doesn't need its own plaque, it's its own memorial. And the two high crosses, they are here. I think I used them in a previous video, possibly, and they are already part of the heritage trail. The Clapper Bridge. That might be worth a video at some point. It's here. This drawing is a bit misleading. It's incomplete now and it has been incomplete since I've been started visiting Greg Namana. So the last bit is a bit adventurous. But there is the bridge and we can add that. I don't think it has a plaque. Uh, bachelor's Walk. That's out here. I would be interested to know why it's called that. I looked it up for Dublin. There's a bachelor's key in Dublin where the bus stops. And that is called after an architect. But maybe this is just a walk that bachelors of Great Namana took. No idea. And I don't know if there is a plaque. I didn't make it there this time. Singleton's well. It's the one from the first. So the there's the information board that started the whole thing and the well is disused so it won't show on the map anymore. But we can still add it to the heritage trail. It's another one of those things that is gone and it's still part of the trail. The pound, which also has its own video. I have to find my bearings now. It's here. And when I mapped that, I added the note part of local heritage to I can delete that now since I have added it to the relation. Nearly there now. The Pound, Hartley and Mullins Memorial. That's the last one. And that is here. And I have to add more details to that. I'll save this. And then I'll read out what it says about that, because you might be interested. Added features to Heritage Trail. Source Heritage Trail leaflet. It says here... The Coolborn Monument, so it has two names, it's called the Coolborn Monument and the Hartley and Mullins Memorial. 
and I think I've added both names to OpenStreetMap. Anyway, the Kolbarn Monument in front of the Abbey Hall is dedicated to the memory of Nicholas Mullins of Thomastown and Sean Hartley of Glenmore. They were killed in an engagement with British Army forces on June 18, 1921 at Kolbarn Castle Comer, in the last days of the Irish War for Independence. Both men were members of the 5th Battalion Kilkenny Brigade IRA Flying Column, which had its headquarters at Great Namana. Local volunteer Jim Slogdoyle of Tinnehinch was also critically wounded in the battle. The monument, like so many others all over the country, is a reminder of the struggles endured by our forefathers in the fight for Ireland's freedom. And if you know Kilkenny, you might know that there's a bridge in Thomastown named after Nicholas Mullins as well, the Nicholas Mullins Bridge which also has a plaque on it, which I think is mapped. And you could add, well, I haven't mapped the memorial in all its steps that I could do. I could add Wikidata entry for the War of Independence, for example. That would be subject Wikidata and whatever the number for the Irish War of Independence is. And maybe there's a Wikidata entry for the skirmish in Coolborn. I don't know. Could be, should be, maybe. And because there are so many memorials that refer to that, it would be nice to have a Wikidata entry for it. But I'm sure there are a lot of people out there very much interested in the Irish War of Independence that could do that. It doesn't all have to be me. So that's most of it done. There's still a lot of work to be done. But we will get there. Um, hopefully, if I run this now, it will have more dots. Or areas. It does. So you have a couple more of the dots, like the memorial that I've just added. And outlines of buildings as well. And when you click on those, you get the link to the heritage trail. But you can also always click on the way and it'll open that and give you a bit more information not as much as is possible but it's a start and it will also always say down here that it is part of the relation Greek Namana Heritage Trail or here the Widow's Cottages has a bit more information and so on and I will have to add more information and more of the sites at some point because I don't like this half finished. But, you know, as I always say, a mapper's work is never done. And where do you stop? We can add so much detail to all these sites. There are some sites that I don't know why they are not part of the Heritage Trail. There was one earlier. Which one was it? Like the Abbey Hall? seems a um, substantial enough building to have in a heritage trail and I'm fairly sure it has a number on the NIAH. But it's a local trail. If they don't see that as heritage, as their heritage, then we have to accept that. Also, yeah, the, the Holy Well is also not part of it for some reason. Who knows? But that was their decision in 2014 or before 2014 and we have to live with that now. And it's still, there's a lot to explore in Greek Namana. I would highly recommend going there for more than an hour during the summer, um, watching all the boats. The boats are there now as well, but it's just not as nice in the winter as it is in summer where you can sit outside with coffee and or go across to Tinahinch and buy yourself some ice cream. Where is that? Here. Well, two years ago they had ice cream. I don't know if they still do. But Super Value probably also has ice cream. If you're stuck for ice cream. And there are cafes as well here. The Waterside Restaurant is a cafe. And the Daisy Chain is a lovely cafe. And Florist. I usually go there just before I catch the bus back. Because it's convenient. It's just across the road from the bus stop. And what they also didn't include, uh, but maybe that's because the creamery wasn't restored at that point, is the old creamery building, which is lovely. And I also have a video about that one. I have seem to have a lot of videos about Greg Lamana. It's just, just 
just goes to show how much heritage there is to explore there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're not utterly confused by what I've tried to show you. And maybe you're inspired to add your local heritage trail to OpenStreetMap as well. It gets easier the more you do it. I can promise you that. Thank you very much for watching. And I shall see you anon. And slán go fall.